We're about to have our best year ever. We're gonna hit $70 million this year. Do you remember where it all started? I was sleeping on the floor of an apartment you were renting in Nutley. I was a bartender, waiter that wasn't making much money, going out every night, partying, drinking, just trying to fill this void that couldn't be filled. I can't live like this, fuck this. January 10th of 2012, I'm just like, I'm not gonna live like this anymore. Yeah. That first order was for 30 units. I was so happy until I found out it was going to South Korea. Yeah. Most people are so scared to make any moves and never take any action instead of just going all in, taking the risk and figuring it out afterwards. We're in this 50,000 square foot facility with all these products and all of our employees just left a full-fledged operation doing tens of millions of dollars a year in sales and shipping millions of orders. Do you remember where it all started? Yeah, it was, it was a tiny, tiny space. I was in my mother's womb looking to scale. You know, I have money on my mind. <laughs> no, I do remember where it all started. Yeah, man, I mean, you remember where it all started. Stony Hill Road. Yeah, that's the physical location. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about where I was my mindset and my state. So like a year prior to that, I remember I was sleeping on the floor of an apartment you were Jane. renting in Nutley and yeah. you were dating my ex's. Ex or uh, no, your ex. You're, no, you were dating my <laughs> ex-girlfriend. Ex ex maybe ex you were, maybe. Nah. Who knows? <laughs> now, now that you bring it up. Your yeah. ex's best friend. You were dating, yeah, you were dating yeah. her best friend. I was sleeping <laughs> on the floor and the crazy part was this was an apartment that I was previously living yes, in with then, her. Yeah, And then, and then she moved out. She was like, she's done with me. I had nowhere to go. I was staying there. Most of the time I was staying in Clifton at that time, just kind of transitioning into that house. Yeah, it was crazy because I was at a bottom. I was a bartender waiter that wasn't making much money. Any money I was making, I was spending it because I was all about instant gratification yeah. at the time. So going out every night, partying, drinking, yeah. thinking it was the world when really I was just trying to fill this void that couldn't be filled. How about some of those Domino pizza nights? That's later on, man. We're not there yet. <laughs> Domino pizza comes once you're a hustling <laughs> entrepreneur. You don't got time to cook. I love cooking. I just didn't have time. But yeah, man. So it was there. And in that moment where I finally was just like, I don't know what it was. Grace of God. Where I was just like, I can't live like this. Fuck this. And at that moment, whenever it was, I can't tell you what made that change. But on January 10th of 2012, I'm just like, I'm not going to live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I started working on myself and I found men that have been through struggles like I had and they were working on themselves and I just started listening to them. Like they were like, okay, what you need to do is wake up at this time, call me every day, show up to work on time, make commitments. It's where it began for me. It's funny because I thought for myself it was all about like drugs and addiction and alcohol and all that and it was none of that. It was all like a well, spiritual a process. Person, it was all a spiritual, physical, mental process. And once I started gaining hope, that's when I started working on myself. To me, it was that point, 2012, where it changed. Now, if you want to fast forward to the Domino's Pizza, that's a year later. February of 2013, after speaking to those same men, a lot of them were entrepreneurs, super successful, living in some of those, you know, upscale mansions in Montclair. Yeah. And they came from the gutter. And I was like, how did you do it? And one yeah. person was like, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm like, another person, how did you do it? And I remember Jay was, you know, he had his own accounting firm. Mm -hmm. Another person, I'm like, Michael. I was like, how did you do it, Michael? And he owned multiple businesses. And so... Spark just, went off. Spark went off. And I'm like, wait, my life is so much better one year later than it was by listening to mm -hmm. them. They're exactly like me and they're living financially free, families, living it up. Why can't I? Like, why can't I? And yeah. at this point, I truly believed in all my heart. It was a mental and physical and spiritual thing for every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm convicted to it in a good way, I'm moving up. If I'm convicted to something in a bad way, shit's yeah. hitting the fan. It's almost like you can manifest your own destiny. 100% you With can. your thought process. 100% you can. 100%. So we understand now the leading up to the idea of starting the business. Now it's like, all right, you got to start the business. Yeah. The fear involved with the investment, the yeah. time. I know at the time we were spending a lot of time together and you were working as a waiter yes. late nights. Yes. You know? So yes. what was that like? Balls to the wall, man. Yeah. I had $3,000, called my mom, asked if I could borrow $2,000. She's like, for what? I was like, well, I want to start this business. I think it's an opportunity. 
Saturday. Mom Dukes, ride or die, you know? Didn't even question it. She's like, I'll give you five. Wow. <laughs> so, just like that. $8,000. I heard there was an opportunity for my yeah. aunt. People were buying products at Costco and reselling them. I went into Costco with $8,000. I spent probably three of those eight on that first run. Bought two of everything from Costco. I didn't go on to YouTube. I didn't do any research. I opened up an Amazon account and the next day yeah. I bought two of everything. Yeah. Started yeah. listing it. Following the guidelines provided, started listing it and nothing was selling. Yeah. <laughs> and my first sale finally came through. Maybe four or five days. It was Welch's Fruit Snacks, snacks an yeah. 80 count. And because I didn't know what I was doing, because I just was like, go get I was yeah. like, you know what? Things got to change. Yeah. And the best way for me to do it, for me at that take moment, action. take action. Yeah. Because I'm going to get stuck in analysis paralysis and wait a year. So if I fuck it up a little bit, so be it. I'll learn through mm. the process. I fucked it up a little bit. That first order was for 30 units. I was so happy until I found out it was going to South Korea. FBM. <laughs> I had to cancel that order. Yeah, of I course. Mean, I mean, the shipping but first I looked it up. First yeah, I looked yeah. it up. I was like, oh, okay. It was like $400 to yeah. ship to make $10 profit altogether, no, right? Or whatever no, it was. I was going to lose $300, yeah. $400. So I was so excited about that. But you know what? It gave me hope. I was like, okay, so this thing works. People are selling. I just had an order and I just had to adjust. I had to learn. Yeah. I had to learn to change my logistics from global to just domestic only. I started to learn. Yeah. But I mean, I dove in, man. I dove in because I know me. And if I start taking action, it forces me to learn. And I became convicted to it and I became addicted to it. Yeah. It was like every day I wanted to learn more. And the only thing I did was Domino's pizza, smoke cigarettes, you know, and Amazon. Yeah, focus on the Amazon. That's it. I mean, yeah. literally, go to bed at midnight, yeah. wake up 6 a.m., repeat the process, rinse, wash, and repeat, except for Tuesdays and Wednesdays and half of the day Thursday where I had my daughter. And even then, I'd still be doing Amazon stuff. Maybe I'd throw her in front of the TV for a little bit or send her to preschool, and that was it. See, I think something interesting that you brought up, and I've known you now for 20-something years, this is something that most people aren't willing to do and it's what you did and you took a risk and you took some money you had obviously not all of it but 40 percent of the available funds you had and you said you know what i'm just going to invest in this company and figure it out afterwards yeah. most people are so scared to make any moves that they'll just have that balance sitting in their bank account collecting you know 0.001 percent interest rate and never take any action instead of just going all in taking the risk and figuring it out afterwards yeah now that you took that risk the business started to grow you built the business out of your uncle's basement and when did you decide to like all right I need to level up here the business is growing I need access to more inventory I need maybe a new space yeah. when did that thought process hit you so first of all you know that if you want something you need to take action thinking about something wishing it'll never happen you need to take action first and foremost and for me I mean even with the three thousand dollars spent quickly in the next two weeks I'm gonna show you how quickly this thing escalated for me because now I was entrenched soon as those first sales came in from South Korea. Then a couple came in domestically once I made that change. I was all in. I went, I took the $5,000 I had remaining all of my money and I went and spent it between Costco's and BJ's and then I quit my job all in the <laughs> same week. But I had a chess move ready. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was gonna work. Yeah. It was a risk. I'm living at an investment home of my aunt and uncles yeah. and I had a plan. And the plan was I'm gonna grow this business out of their basement. I don't have any money to pay rent or utility, <laughs> but I can go get another job or yeah. I can ask my aunt if she wants to be a partner. Mm. And then that way I know I can get out of paying rent and utilities yeah. because her business partner <laughs> she's gonna need to be building the business and that's what I did yeah. that, at that point I was like hey this thing's that's growing you brought yeah. this Amazon idea to me I think we could do something big together plus you know she was a little bit older she had credit cards she was situated her kids were out of school already and so I was like that was the play I thought yeah. you know hey should I go to her yes I should and so I did and she was fully game for it yeah. she was like yeah let's see what we can do all of a sudden I didn't have to pay rent or utilities Start and I could business. focus on the business she didn't have to spend time on the business, I was going to be the operator. And then soon after, we were able to begin leveraging her credit cards and really start growing and scaling. And then what was the point you decided to move into that first space across from the high school? So the first space across from the high school, February is when we started. By July or August, we were moving into that first space. Mm. It happened that quickly. Over the summer, there was a product that came out called Loom Bands. Yeah. And we were getting these from China. We were getting like, you know, the knock 
knockoff ones, the, the cheaper Fugazi version. Boys, right, yeah. it was like called Royal Loom Bands, right? Not $30, $40 ones. We were selling the $20 boys. Yeah. But we had to create the packages themselves. Mm. They came and then we had to put the Loom Bands in bags with the little emblems and all that. So I remember I had my mom, grandma, Uncle Ted, Aunt Yola, Nicole, Nina, Matt, me, Matt's girlfriend or fiance, all who's now his wife, product. all throughout the house, upstairs, living room, basement, packaging these products. And I looked around and I was like, this is not gonna yeah. fly. Like this is the no end. Space. And so we're risk takers. And mm -hmm. it's got its advantages and it's got its, it's disadvantages. disadvantages. Yeah. And my aunt and uncle are way more conservative. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. You know, they've worked their jobs, they've made their money. They don't have a reason to risk. I get yeah. it. I had every reason in the world to. Yeah. And so I really had to push to get that first warehouse. But I was able to convince, I said, look what we've done in six months. Could you imagine if I had a space? And I remember getting the space, man. It was 800 square feet. It was probably from these black racks to these boxes. Yeah. We went there recently, you saw. Yeah, there should be a clip of that yeah. right here. There's limited space there. And it wasn't big. Looking back now, I know everything's relative. Cause like when we were talking earlier about, you know, $40,000 loss, this and that. And to us now it's like, it's nothing. But yeah. back in the day, fucking $4 loss was like yeah. end of the world, yeah. right? But I remember being in that space asking myself, how am I gonna fill this? Mm. Did I make a mistake? You know, I had all these fears. And the thing is, if you're someone that has a fear, like good, good, that means you're human. But now the next step is to move through it. Cause if once again, you don't take action, my biggest fear nowadays is if I were to never have taken that. Imagine where I would have been if I never fucking just said, no, let me go for it. I don't. Balls to the wall, yeah. it'd be a fucking shoe salesman. <laughs> Nothing wrong with shoe salesman, but it's just not in your line. No, so. I'd be an UGG shoe salesman. <laughs> worst kind of shoe salesman. All right, so you get in this space, start scaling. I know there was a thing where they knocked down the wall and you got some additional space. Dude, that's God's grace. Yeah. That's God's grace. So we're in this space. We have, you know, rest in peace, Vinny. Vinny First yeah. employee, I hire him. We have 40 boxes of mac and cheese. He comes in on day one. I hired him like first week I'm in the space because yeah. I want to concentrate on sourcing. I already knew, hey, we can leverage people to prep the products and to also drive. Vinny had a license. Remember yeah. this first you warehouse, didn't license, I didn't have a yeah. license. I just remembered. I didn't have a license for the first two and a half years of the business yeah. because of things I previously did. You know, kids at home, stop when the cop says stop. <laughs> <laughs> when he said stop the car, don't keep going. So Vinny now, you got him driving around doing pickups, he's, labeling some inventory. He's doing pickups. We're also still doing a little retail arbitrage, but now Vinny's going with me and we're going in this tiny little box truck that mm. we got. We purchased this used beat up box truck and that's where we're starting. But quickly it starts filling up and by that same holiday season, fully packed to the brim. Now we got Greg there, okay. second employee, second. but he was with us for Longest, seven, eight yeah. years, right? Became the manager at one point. We had this other kid there, don't remember his name, and then this mom and daughter who are all picking, packing, prepping the products yeah. in this tiny space. And I'm like, there's no room Whoa. left. We have shipments coming in. I have nowhere to put it. Yeah. What should I do? Mind you, this place was so small, it didn't have a bathroom in yeah. it, right? I used to have to walk walk around the building to another building to use the toilet. And all of a sudden, as I'm having this thought about what to do, who shows up? The town. The town shows up, they're inspecting the building, yeah. they're just their annual inspection. The inspector says to me, hey, I see the offices, see the warehouse, everything looks straight, where's your bathroom? And I go, oh, it's around in the other building. He goes, you don't have direct access to a bathroom? I go, I do, it's around the other yeah. building. Like, you know, I had no idea. Yeah. He's like, no, that's not allowed. Yeah. I'm like, I thought I got the landlord in trouble. Yeah. Landlord came to me the next day. I thought I'm getting kicked out because I don't know anything yeah, about yeah. business yet, right? Yeah. I'm just like, oh, I fucked up. I snitched. I thought I was getting kicked out. Here we are in November. I'm like, all these products is going to kick me out. He's like, Sebastian, I need to put a hole through this wall right here. On the other side was a freight company. They were just in and out where they would use it as a trans dock. So, you know, pallets come in yeah, one day and, and then the door the same day, yeah. same day. Most of the time it was empty. When he says that to me, I said, can we put a pallet size hole in there? Mm -hmm. Once again, a I think another chess move that was yeah. given to me by the universe because I just thought of it right on the whim. He's like, yeah, we could do that before I even asked the freight company, but I knew I was going to ask them next. Yeah. So he, that same week, they drill right through the cement block, cinder blocks, put a pallet size hole in there, right? It was maybe six feet by six feet. And while they're doing that, I go to the freight company and I say to them, hey, I'm shipping about a 
truck, two trucks every week to Amazon right now, LTL. Yeah. You know, I want to give you all of that business. It's going right to Pennsylvania, but only thing I would need from you is to be able to use a little bit of your space. If that's okay, I could even pay you for it. Yeah. They're like, listen, we love what you're doing. You're a young kid growing your business. Mm. Yeah, we'll take the freight. You'll pay for the freight, yeah. but you could use our space. Don't pay for it as long as you keep it to the side. All of a sudden, I went from 800, 900 square feet to 5,000. Yeah. When I was out Overnight. of space, holiday yeah. season, a month till Christmas, what am I going to do? All the space. The universe yeah. comes yeah. in. You're in that first warehouse. Things obviously continue to grow. You knock the hole in the wall, but it still clearly wasn't enough because we upgraded again to yeah. a new space. If that 5,000 was ours, yeah. it would have been enough. But you but were like, borrowing it. Borrowing yeah. it if they needed yeah. it anytime. Then so you wanted full control. Yeah, and you remember that space. It wasn't it very was, organized and it wasn't cohesive to like streamlined process. I you mean, can't fit a 53 yeah. foot trailer. No. It was very difficult yeah. to fit a full trailer in there. And we we're getting to that, right? Yeah. We were starting to build to that. So July, August of the following year, when that lease was coming to an end, that's where we found our space in Pinebrook. And we moved into that 2,000 square foot spot. We had two docks now instead of one dock. We had a couple employees there. Yeah. It was you, me, Robert, Angelo, Anthony. And you were going part-time to school Robert at that time? Robert like Mac? Yes, oh, Mac. And was, you were going to school at that time, Paul. I don't remember if it was that. I, I think I was still living in a halfway house at that time. Maybe. That's, that's School of Hard Knocks you were <laughs> yeah, going to. Yeah, School of Hard Knocks at that time. <laughs> All right, so new space. I remember it was like 2,500 square feet. I thought what was cool for me is you would go and pick up Adriana or whatever you had to do. And at the time, I didn't drive either. So I was taking the bus to that place every day. And I remember the day you gave me a key. And you're like, hey, man, you can stay here as long as you want and prep items and get work done. And for weeks I would stay there till fucking 9, 10 o'clock at night. It'd be nobody there and I remember packaging these brushes and it was just so fucking cool. Yes. You know, to be able to be like in control of the growth of something and also be able to come and go as you please. Yeah. You know, that freedom for me was fucking awesome especially for someone who was constantly locked up in places and yeah. didn't really have much freedom. I don't care if you're in a 50 foot closet yeah. or a 50,000 square foot warehouse. If you're doing something that gives you perfect Purpose, yeah, it gives the same feeling. Mm -hmm. It gives the same feeling. Mm -hmm. I can't say that now because of this, I feel any better than I did in that basement. Yeah. I feel exactly the same because I had purpose and I yeah. have purpose today. Yeah, right. It's yeah. not like oh my god, like that's all that matters. Yeah. All right, so we're in this 2,500 square foot warehouse, and I remember towards the end there, before we broke down some walls and expanded, I yeah. mean, you could barely move. Anthony and his brother, they were getting very angry because half of their day was just spent moving shit. Yes. Right. Yeah. Pallet jack coming down. Hey, we need that pallet up there, and in front of it's four other pallets, yes. and there's no room to move those four pallets. So now they're picking them up, stacking them on other pallets, and then you need the pallet below the pallet. You just stack something on top of, and they were getting very frustrated. Like this is crazy. The thing is, you and I—at least I can speak for myself. No, you too. You can Fuck speak it. for yeah. me. Yeah. We didn't know how to run a business. No, we didn't know shit. We, didn't know. we barely even knew how to run our lives. Yeah. Only thing we were really good at was hard work. Yes. We could yes. fucking work the shit out of anyone yes. else. I could be a fucking racehorse. Yeah. Especially if you give me purpose. Yeah. And I think that's where we thrive. But yeah. so much inefficiency at that yeah. point. So the next aha moment was really when you went to the landlord and asked if he had additional space. Yeah. And what happened there? Same thing <laughs> happened in the last place. He put a pallet size <laughs> hole in and gave us an additional 5,000, yeah, 4,000, 4, 4 to 5,000 yeah. space. And, and an additional An additional door. dock, man. Yeah. Additional dock. So now all of a sudden we had three docks, six to yeah. 7,000 square feet and we were putting up racks yeah. and I mean we were starting to build a business and at this point we had an operation flow. Yes. We didn't understand production lines and no. prep but me and you started building out systems like okay we find the product on Amazon we yeah. print the stickers we place Basically, the labels yeah. on a desk and yeah. people would come and, yeah. and people would come clipboards later well, that's advanced. Right? Yeah that's true they would yeah. just come in and they grab just, a label they would, and then pick which product they we, wanted. We would to write down on the top label yeah, yeah. and on the back of it what it was yeah. and how many it'd be like you know baking soda 60 <laughs> units yeah, right yeah. and they would pick what they wanted and then they would go do it there was no time check nothing and they liked that too they had the freedom, freedom. of being able to yeah. do what they wanted and yeah. there were some people that really thrived in that yeah. some people that were crushing it in production while others took advantage of it do you remember the baking soda story what's the baking soda story us when we realized when we read the amazon guidelines and we found out we could double stack yeah, yeah. 
I remember double stacking. We would get, what, 56 pallets in a truckload. Yeah. Right? 28 times yeah. two. Yeah, we would get yeah. 56 pallets yeah. in a truck. A baking soda. And a baking soda. <laughs> yes. Uh, they were 10 pound bags. And yeah. we were ordering truckloads from Costco. Yes. And we loaded them all up. Me and you, I remember we were so happy. We we're like, we're going to save so much money on shipping. Yeah. We're putting 56 pallets in this truck. And the truck and was like 50,000 pounds. Our driver showed up. He's like, this is almost 100,000 GMV. I'm like, what's GMV? Yeah. I don't know any of this. Or GWV, whatever it is. Gross weight vehicle, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm like, I, I had no idea. He's yeah, like, dude, yeah. guys, this can't be over 50,000 yeah. or 40,000, whatever yeah. it was. We were double, two and yeah. a half times over that. But he still took it. He still <laughs> took it. He's like, if I get fined, I'm giving Next it to time. you guys. In this second space, now we got 7,000 square feet. We kind of got some structure of how the workflow is, right? The products come in, they go to one region, then they're prepped, and then they go to a shipping area. But there was really no infrastructure as far as like systems and SOPs. No, I mean, do you remember the departments, the different production areas? It was just pick one and go wherever you want. They would come in. Yeah, grab, grab a table. Grab a table, <laughs> grab a fold up and table. And set it up wherever they yes. wanted. But then we knocked down another wall. We did because we had momentum and we had growth and yeah. we knew at that point that you and I couldn't spend our time prepping. No. We spent a lot of time in the warehouse yes. checking on things, ensuring that they were doing things correctly, but then we go back to sourcing. That was the bread and butter and we yeah. knew that yeah. early sourcing on. Sourcing had to be the focus because yeah. if you're not sourcing, you don't have the inventory to prep, to ship, to sell. Yeah, and at that time it didn't make sense for us to be prepping products when we could pay somebody $10, $11, whatever the rate was at that point to be doing that job. Yeah. So we get into this new space, which was probably an additional 7,000 square feet about, right? It was six to seven. It was probably close to what that second space yeah. was, yeah. So now we're at 12, maybe yeah. 13,000 yeah, square say, feet. Yeah, I'd say probably about 12,000. And now we have it, it was extended. It was almost like a big L. Yes. Where the, the L part, like the long side was very long. And the offices now, we moved all the way to the tip of the L. Well, I mean, also, this is a moment for us in our business. This is the first time we're having offices. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's we've true. Had, we're, we're becoming legit yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we, we had like a cubicle. In the warehouse, yeah, yeah, it was still yeah. a cubicle in the yeah, warehouse. Yeah. This is the first time we have yeah. offices, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, that was cool. And did the second unit have restrooms? The first unit The second had, unit didn't. Right, The yeah. first unit. First, or the third and, and the, the first. first. Yeah, yeah, the first had, and the third. Had restrooms. Yeah, but Ted had his own office. Me and you, we shared that office. Ted had a closet. Yeah, Ted had a closet. <laughs> it was Ted so tiny. Ted had a co-room. Yeah, yeah. It was tiny. The buyers had their own little space. Yeah, the, the buyers had, they, they had like start, the reception desk. Yes, they had the reception <laughs> desk, but it's still, this was also a moment where we started bringing in buyers yes. in that third space. Yes. Now we were expanding, now me and you couldn't do it all. No. And I think at this point, you are going back to school now. Yeah, I went back to finish my last eight credits at college, yeah. And I would leave two days a week. I would take the bus to yeah. Brooklyn. And Brooklyn. you're not driving at this time, right? Or you have a car? I did have a car at that point because I would drive to the bus stop. My dad found it somewhere on like Facebook. Facebook, or uh -huh. it was like a $2,000 beater, uh -huh. but it was like, it was perfect. Man. Yeah, yeah, you it's know? got you from point A to point B. I think it was like a Buick or something. Point A to point B, that's all mm. you need. The felt on the ceiling was like coming down, so it like hit my head. Oh yeah. But, I mean, it got me, man, it's, it's all about, I was just grateful to have a car, yeah. you know? I didn't yeah. have a car for, or a license for years. Yeah, I mean, grew the business without a license. That's why I say there's no excuses. No like, excuses. There's people who have excuses, and then there's people who make it happen and the yeah. people who make it happen if you're one of those people you're going to succeed yeah but if you're one of those people that are going to say oh amazon's too saturated oh tiktok's the new thing i'm going to stay away from amazon yeah. oh people aren't really making money yeah. oh it's too difficult yeah. i'm too late like no people are going to be making money 10 years from now 100 years from now a thousand years yeah. from now and people are going to also have excuses yeah so it's up to you to make that decision guy just commented on one of our instagram posts today he said but you're not going to make any money because of the fees and the shipping. And it's like, I look at his profile, he owns a photography business. So it's like, yeah, says the guy who's never sold a product on the internet talking about like he knows shit. Yes, like, I've, I, like, I've been doing this for 11 years for free. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, for 11 years. And we've just got this place just to make these videos. Yes, yes. Just to convince you that you could maybe make some money. <laughs> we started this. Do you remember when we started this and we were dead broke? We said, you know what we need to do? We need to build a five hundred million dollar business so we can make YouTube videos to convince people that it's real. Yeah. We're not going to make any money. No, no money. It's a no complete money. loss yeah. leader yeah. just to convince people this shit is yeah. real. 
And then we need to make enough money off those videos and the content we produce to pay for everything. Yes, that's where we're going to pay for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're going to actually make money. Once Google sponsors us. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right, man. That's just how people are, right? You're going to have yeah. those people that are going to be filled with excuses. And also, whoever that guy is, at the end of the day, there's a lot of bullshit on the internet. Yeah. There's a lot of misinformation. Yeah. Which I was just thinking about it when I was having a conversation with Grant earlier. I was thinking about, that actually is a good thing because I feel like the new generation, yes. they're more questioning things. Yeah. They're more prone to kind of looking at things. What social media has done, at first it came out, everyone was out there with the cars and if you saw a car, you were a billionaire. Yeah, yeah. And now they understand the yeah. game. Yeah. They understand the difference between what's authentic and what's just BS. Yeah. So it, it's a good thing too. But because there's a lot of misinformation, people question it. I get and I think it. the other side of that too with the hate comments and then we'll get back into the story but it's like, you don't know what's going on in that person's life. You don't know what happened to them this morning. They yeah. woke up and yeah. they're having this fucking yeah. shit day and then they see yeah. this post and they're like, fuck these guys. Yeah, You know, exactly. and post some absurd shit. So it's like, maybe I need to put myself in their shoes sometimes. Yeah, you it's know? true. It's true. Either or they're just assholes. Could be. Either way. Could be. But if they are, probably for a reason. Yeah. Like you said. We're in warehouse essentially two, three, and four, which combined into one giant warehouse. We start building some basic SOPs, nothing really critical that's going to allow massive growth. We started implementing some prep stations, yeah. right? It had some guidelines of how the employees should navigate within those prep stations. It was no longer like grab a table, pick a corner, and rock and go. At that point, we implemented like a carrying case for our FN SKUs, yes. little tubes yes. that we'd put them in. Yeah, little bins for all of our labels. But you know what's the coolest part about this whole process at this point? There's a couple things. One of those things is at this point, I realize I'm a leader to these mm. people. Like they're coming to me, asking me questions, asking for solutions. And then another point was I'll never forget when I started to have to put them on payroll because we started building yeah. out our team and I'm signing checks for people. Yeah. And they're taking that home and feeding their family with yeah. that. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Just a short time before that from having a glimmer of hope, Yeah. a glimmer of hope to now seeing those tiny actions build on top of each other, stack on top of each other, to boom, here we are. Yeah. Fourth warehouse, yeah. three converted into one, 10, 15 employees, all looking to me and to you to provide for them. It's mind boggling. Mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Yeah. And that feeling of gratitude, that feeling of confidence, because mm. I lost confidence for a long time, mm. man. I lost confidence. I remember, man, I remember having to go to this outpatient program, part of this government rehabilitation thing when I lost my license and then wanting to put me on medication and I'll never forget. She's like, I said, why do you think I require this medication? Yeah. I don't think I'm crazy. Yeah. She goes, no, but you're depressed. And I said to her, she was like maybe 25 at this time. She's probably mid thirties. Yeah. I'm like, how would you feel if you blew up the relationship with your daughter's mother? Yeah. Your daughter barely knows you. You can't provide for anyone. You don't have a car. You don't have a job. You don't have any <laughs> friends. Would you be a little depressed? I Put me on medication if I'm not depressed. <laughs> then that means there's something wrong yeah. with me. But going from that moment to like three years later, whirlwind. Cutting checks for people. Cutting checks for people. Yeah. How quick things can change yeah. if you put your mindset to yeah. it. If you just say today's the day, it's just stacking up. It's so small. Mm. It's that 1% day over day that yeah. stacks up. Yeah. It really is. It's nuts, man. We've come a long way. So we get out of that space and now we need something bigger. And we didn't fuck around with this one. I mean, we need something substantially bigger. So we went from... Well, why though? Do you remember why? Because this was the first time you were talking with brands at trade shows. Yes. And we were thinking about bringing them through. Yes. We and were, we, we wanted already... a nice place to present to them. Correct. So it's like, hey, check out our beautiful spot. Yes. This is where we'll store your inventory, prep your inventory, yes. make sure it's protected and ship yes. it to yes. customers. Yes. That's right. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, so we started partnering with some brands and we had yes. our first couple brands come through at that, at that three location. At, yeah. yeah, at that three location, which yeah. was like, after they saw it, they ran away. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wanted to pick up the calls yeah. after that. Yeah. So for the next one, we went all out. I mean, what, yes. what was it, 30,000? Or was it 25? It I think was, it was like it was 25. Like, it was 22, 25, yeah, I don't recall. Yeah, so 22, 25,000 square feet. But the cool thing about this place was, it was beautiful. Yes. I mean, you could eat off the floors yeah. when we moved in. We redesigned the whole upstairs the whole to upstairs. build out the offices. And we got We some, knocked down the 
the offices downstairs. Yeah, yeah that's true. It was all like cubicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was offices. Yeah. And we had them knock down the sheetrock walls. Yeah. And we put in production stations yeah. down there. And this is where we really started building momentum. And uh, systems. And systems. Like true systems. True systems. Do you remember me and you going in there and measuring yeah. everything? Oh. Because we learned from our mentors and how important is it for you to learn from other people? Like okay. if we didn't learn the things that we learned from Ernie, if we didn't learn the things that we learned from that distribution company, what were they called? They were the food distributors for like half the schools in New York City. Driscoll. 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 Driscoll, yeah. Driscoll. But I mean, if we didn't learn the things that we did from these people, like where would we be? Yeah. It's so important to drop your pride, humble yourself, yeah. and just say, I don't know. Yeah. Soak it up I like don't a know. sponge. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember we moved into that space. We didn't know what we were doing, or we thought we did yeah. until we met people who really knew yeah. what they were doing. They were like, shit, we got to we thought fix we knew what up. we were doing. Yeah. And that's the thing why it's so important to learn from others. Because yeah. we were convinced. And who could tell us different? There month was, over yeah. month, our business was, was growing. growing. But once we saw how the big players played, that's when we were yeah. like, we got to move in this space. Yeah. We got to get brands. And we got to build out our systems. So we opened a lot of brand direct accounts in that space. We ended up putting together some pretty serious systems because we were able to grow the business from we probably moved in doing two-ish million a month. Were we there when we hit our first seven million? No. Nah. We were here when we hit our first seven. But we definitely hit a six million million dollar month in that space, Probably. which is crazy. For me, you were helping build out the systems that I remember I was working on the automation, bringing yeah. in our first developers in Yeah, building out the software. Yeah, building out the software. Which was a fucking revolutionary game changer. Yeah. Revolutionary. Yeah. And now that's what you spend most of your time doing, yeah. which is why we have this today and why we have probably one of the most efficient third party FBA companies, I think, in the space, you know, it's except for maybe the patterns out there yeah. and some of these guys yeah. who yeah. have billions of dollars yeah. and have automations yeah. like out the ass, you know? Yeah, but, but for, for a business that's bootstrapped like yeah. us, oh. without any equity stakeholders, yes. I don't think anyone's comparing. Yeah. So we built out the infrastructure. We hired a massive team. At that point, we had probably upwards of 45 employees. I remember yeah, some of those Christmas parties. More, right? yeah, yeah, especially when COVID hit, yes. we had 60 employees <laughs> in that place. And they would change every week. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so many temps coming in yeah. and out. And me and you were there every day. Every day. While the world took off of work, we worked seven days a week, 14, 15 hour days Minimum. for an 18 month straight. Minimum. Minimum, dude. yeah. Minimum. It's a double edged sword though, because it's a terrible thing to happen to the world. But yes. I mean, for all e commerce businesses, yeah. if you had the infrastructure to get access to products, your yes. business three to four X in a short period of time, yes. which is unheard of. Yes. And then it didn't decline after no. that, it continued. That's what happened to us. And because it continued, we needed where we are right now. Yeah, 50,000, 50,000 square feet. I'll never forget. I mean, when the world was going through COVID, I mean, how cool of a feeling was it to know that you were providing? Yeah, it was cool. You, We were a solution. Yeah. Like, it motivated me to yeah. put in those days, seven days a week. Yeah. We're five, six years into this, and we're back to doing seven days a week, yeah. 15, 16 hours, like you yeah. said. But once again, back to the purpose. Yeah. The new purpose was the world's in a pandemic, and literally, people can't get out. Yeah. And we can provide. Yeah, because we had access to the Lysols and the wet wipes yeah. and all those products that And the people, consumables and yeah. everything else. A lot of products that weren't even available yes. in stores. Yes. Well, you remember we were providing to the senior citizen homes yeah. in New York. The peanut butter. All the peanut butter, all yeah. the canned tuna. I yeah. mean, this is New York. State of New York can't get these products. So they're buying them And we us. can get it. Yeah. But that goes back to relationships, right? Yeah. That's why we're always talking about the importance of relationships. Yeah. Because if we didn't have those relationships cemented. It would have never happened. I mean, we're talking about big companies that can't get these products, but yet because of our relationships, we can. Yes, it's a game changer. We've made a lot of warehouse moves at this point, right? Yeah. So we understand how to make the move so the production doesn't stop, right? You move over one production station, leave the other ones over there, get these productions fully set up and then move the whole team over, right? So it has to be a, a healthy transition or else your business will decline, which is unacceptable, yeah. especially for operators. I mean, you can't have your business decline. You got to keep it moving. But like, do you see the, the shift that happened from the last move to this move? Oh, this one was so much more seamless. Because we, we didn't do anything. Yeah. I think I was in California. <laughs> so <we're not. laughs> it was so much easier. We're gonna, I don't remember it. That's it. Yeah. I wasn't here. You were. Delegation, dude. Yeah. Delegation. Yeah, we were. That's true. I don't we, think I moved. We were, other than my office, I don't think I moved We were anything. in on. Yeah. We weren't here. Yeah. But now we've built out the teams so well. We had the director of operations and the warehouse 
warehouse manager yeah. handle it all for yeah. us. And although we were coming here and helping them map out how it's going to be laid out, we weren't the ones laying it out. And even the mapping out, they did a yeah, lot. Yeah, they man. did. Yeah, Brian and, and Lewis. They man. measured this yeah. all out. Yeah. everything. That's true. Yeah. That's true. They Brian set and up Lewis all were of this. next level. Yeah. yeah, they did better job on this than we did <laughs> yeah. in the last yeah. days. Talk about evolution. Yeah. Like that's what you want. And a lot of people are scared to bring on a team because they don't think they could do as good as them. But you just said it. We brought on people that are now doing better jobs than we can do ourselves. No, you need to. Yeah. If you want to scale, you need to a learn from others and then. B, be willing to give up the throne. As a leader, you can pass the baton. Yes. This isn't something where you just got to hold on to it. Yes. You need to be willing to do that. Yeah. So now in this space, we've obviously been crushing. In the past year, we've onboarded 30 plus brand direct Crazy. relationships. Crazy. Brand exclusives, man, all day. Yeah, brand exclusives. And still a large percentage, 80% of our business is wholesale. Yeah. I mean, that's the bread and butter that yeah. drives a lot of the cash. It's amazing. I mean, yes. we're not going to scale back from wholesale, no. you know, but we're going to continue to scale into brand exclusives. 100%. But I mean, wholesale still fucking works. All that jibber jabber you hear on the internet, it's all oh, Amazon FBA is dead. It's like, this shit ain't dead. You're just not doing it right. It's, yeah, it's the same people, man. You can make excuses, blame others, or you could take full accountability. And the thing is, I think we got in a point of our life, I'm so grateful for it because I was forced to take full accountability. Yes. I was left in a place where I had no one else to nobody, blame. Nobody, yeah. There was nobody yeah, left. Yeah. I, it was like, it was me, myself, and I. Right. No one either. to blame yeah. and no one to help. Yeah. And at that point, it taught me accountability. Yeah. I know if you want to succeed as an entrepreneur in whatever you do, you gotta be accountable. You have to be accountable. Yeah. You have to. So this was a nice little snippet of our journey and kind of where we started. And obviously there's a million stories in between all of this. Yeah, of course. Right, but if you had one piece of advice to give to somebody who's really doing anything in their life and trying to build something. It could be anything, right? It doesn't have to be FBA. I mean, that's just what we chose. But people are building businesses every single day. Yeah. You know, what would that piece of advice be to that person? I would say get up today and start. And don't stop. Mm. Don't stop. It's just that simple. Don't yeah. stop. I've never heard of a toddler trying to learn and quitting. Well, like, they don't. They just they just keep walking because they're going to learn how to do yeah, it. Yeah, they're going to learn how to walk. Yeah, or yeah. ride a bike or whatever read or write. Whatever it is. Yeah. Are they going to get discouraged? Are they going to cry? Are they going to fall? Yes, but that's it. I mean, the formula is that simple, but people get in here and then they don't. And I've done it myself for too long. But this time I said, enough is enough. I started walking. I fell a lot of times. Mm. I tripped, scraped my knees, but I kept going yeah. and we're still going, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I take out of the last 10 years. That would be my advice for somebody. Yeah. Just go. Today's the day. Stop with the excuses. Not, oh, and I got to meet. Action. Just yeah. start. Yeah. Just start. Fucking start. So it's gonna separate the success from yeah. just the people who do mediocre yeah, shit. Yeah, just start and don't stop. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I give. What advice do you have for somebody that's getting started? Organization. I mean, you gotta be organized in your day to day. Initially, it's very challenging to do that. But once I started getting more tasks built up on top of more tasks, what might not happen for the first couple months. Might be a year in that you may experience that. So this is more geared towards the person who's already operating. You gotta be organized. And for me, the way I do that is Google Calendar, man. I have, my whole day is structured. From the minute I wake up until the minute I go to sleep, everything Thing from personal appointments to business appointments to relationships. If I'm visiting somebody, it's all on my calendar. Because if it's not on my calendar, I'm not going to show up to it. I got too much going on up here and in the day to day to remember every single thing that needs to be done. So I need a physical reminder in my pocket that says, hey, you have this in 10 minutes. Yeah. You have this tomorrow. So we've been building this for 10, 11 years now, 50,000 square foot warehouse. And you know, we're so busy that I don't even have time to ask you, what's your next goal for the business? Yeah. So, and we've talked about this briefly in the past. It was originally $100 million. Yeah. That was the goal. Yeah, remember that? You know, but as we have got closer to that 100 million dollars we realize that we don't want to operate a hundred million dollar business because it comes with more problems more people more labor costs more returns yeah. just more issues all around so my goal and I would agree you second this is to focus on increasing the profitability and making more profits in our business with less revenue less shipped orders than we've ever did before well that's what we've done in 2024 and I 100% agree I concur I mean at the end of the day I want to continue 
continue to invest in our other ventures. Like, yeah. you know, we're doing a lot of things in other areas which are providing me purpose. Back yes. to that thing of purpose. Like this thing is almost at a point of self-sustainability. Yes. We just have to join the meetings and then the rest is operating. I know I'm still a leader here, but I feel like my purpose is driving me elsewhere right now. So I too agree. I don't want to leave this space. I want to continue to grow it. But the 100 million top line revenue just doesn't interest me. No. It doesn't get me up in the morning. No. A bottom line that takes care of my family and that's going higher with being more efficient here and putting less work on our team and then being able to continue to give them raises and then making more money with less work and then being able to work on our other ventures, that motivates me. Mm. That gets me excited. I agree 100%. That's where we're going. And now that we're talking about increasing profits, I mean, we're about to have our best year ever. We're going to hit $70 million this year, which yeah. is bigger than we've ever done. And the coolest part is the margins are better than they've ever been. Yes. The efficiencies are more efficient than they've ever been. Yes. And we're making more money than we've ever made. And at the end of the day, the 70 million, 100 million, it's cool. But like I said, like my purpose right now is to continue to help the community. I just get more out of it when I see somebody that's a younger version of you, a younger version of me, or just somebody who just has that same raw emotion of being unsure about their future and being able to help them mm. and help the community and then seeing them actually change. How many of our community members have we seen? It's not just their business changes. You literally Personally. see the way that they approach us. They, it changes. They mature. They feel more confident. They start having purpose. It's crazy. It's like they illuminate. Yeah. There's a different aura to them. Yeah. And seeing that, that's what drives me now. So we want to continue to do that. And if that's you and you're putting in the work to build the business, go after it and go get it.